In this video lesson, uh, I'm going to show you uh, various ways to create uh, land, uh, three dimensional landscape elements. Um, everything that you see here is created with uh, Max. There are plugins out online that um, you can purchase very expensive that uh, would give you the ability to create more realistic trees and skies and whatnot. But um, what we're doing is we're working with what we have, and that's simply. Um, creating a gradient sky that you're going to see here where the darker uh, the lights down the bottom the darks at the top or vice versa you can do light at the top dark at the bottom uh, we have clouds uh, using the atmospheric effects that we have inside um, 3ds max with the use of gizmos will create these clouds uh, AEC, AEC extended uh, parameters um, objects that we have um, like trees and bushes that are already um, pre-made in max uh, using simple geometrical shapes to create uh, 3D rocks and then using uh, certain commands to make them uh, to channel them into directions and whatnot using the uh, architectural design uh, and architectural water as well as creating uh, these digital landscape um, backdrops with uh, edit mesh and whatnot and then we're going to use procedural terrain uh, our procedural mapping where uh, we'll create one image for the entire scene as opposed to putting multiple images in here and having overlap and um, very uh, I guess you could say unprofessional tiling of materials so uh, with that um, let's go ahead and get begin um, this is uh, well about an hour or so uh, this video so you will want to make sure that you have plenty of uh, um, caffeine for this one We're going to begin our 3D landscape by defining the sky in our scene. Now, if we were to put a picture in the background, we all know that if you animate, that sky background would not change, giving it a very fake illusion. What we need to do is create an atmosphere around us that moves when the animation moves. That way, we feel like we're actually in a real life scene. So what we do is we're going to create a dome to kind of confine our sky. I'm going to do that by starting off with a sphere. Now, if we were to put a camera inside this sphere right now uh, and do a render, it'd be black because uh, there's no material mapped on the inside because we're in a solid object. What we need to do is we need to actually create a hollow sphere. And to do that, I'm just going to take my scale tool, hold shift, and do a clone right inside the other one, a very thin ball. Zoom in here to one part of that sphere. I'm going to select the outer sphere and I'm going to use the create geometry compound object method of Boolean. A minus B is going to allow me to take the first sphere and select the inner sphere. I have to choose what operand B is by hitting right there select that sphere and now that ball is hollow now if we go inside it with a camera which I'll drop a camera in there just a quick free camera and make sure my top view I am sitting inside this sphere go ahead and click on the camera and make you visual we're inside that sphere so if we do a render we'll see the color of that Remember, just dropping a ball in there is not going to work. A ball, even though it's a mesh, is considered a solid object. Now what we want to do, we could pick blue. I can go up there and say, all right, make a blue. And um, we'll just pick this sky blue, do a render, and all that we see is blue. So we're going to have to jump out to Photoshop here real quick, and we're going to look at a picture of this landscape. And for just a brief second, you can take a look and notice that this sky is not just one color blue. It is various shades of blue. Uh, dark blue towards the top, lighter blue towards the bottom. Uh, it can variate depending on where the sun is in the sky. If you're talking about noon when the sky, uh, the sun is in the top of the sky, then what's going to happen is, is you're you're going to have a gradient sky where you have lighter blue that gets darker towards the horizon. It'll be the opposite if it's during uh, sunset or sunrise. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a very quick way of going into Max and creating that gradient sky. Before we create the material, let's go ahead and remove half of this dome. We don't need the entire dome. We're not going to see anything in the bottom. So I'm just going to edit mesh, highlight all the vertices in the half, second half, and hit delete. And that kind of gives me a little bit more to work with here. All right, no sense in having all that geometry down there. We're not going to see it anyways. Now, to make a gradient material apply to an object such as this, we need to apply a UVW map so that the material knows how to physically fit. By default, we're at planar. That's not really going to work. We could try cylindrical, and we'll see how that works. And then when we come back, we'll experiment. We can always change that. But now the, the, the object knows how to accept the material that we're going to create. Go ahead and open up the material editor. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the maps rollout. And we're going to create a, a map here in the diffuse color slot. The one that I'd like you to use if you've got the material map browser is called gradient. Now you also notice that we have a gradient ramp and, and uh, you'll experiment with that in a different project later on. But what gradient does is it's pretty much doing just that. It's going from a dark to a light color. Now we can set these colors to blue, but we still don't know exactly if we're going to get the right colors here. So as you remember, when you select a color, you have the ability to change the red, the green, and the blue colors, along with the hue, the saturation, and the value. Let's take a quick bounce back out to Photoshop and say that we want to sample this shade of dark blue here. In Photoshop, you just take your eyedropper tool, select that, that makes that the color. Double click on that, and what Photoshop is going to do is give you the RGB for that color. So we have a R of 53, a 117 for green, and a 253 for blue. We also see that you have the hexadecimal color. Unfortunately, Max does not accept the hexadecimal color. Okay. Now, with those numbers, that is going to allow us to hit cancel here and jump back into Max and make color one that. So I'll do a red of 53, a green of 117, and a blue of 253. Go ahead and hit OK. And that first color, that dark color, is going to be the top of the gradient. Bounce back out to Photoshop. Let's take a sample of this color. Click on it. And we'll go to 162 for R. 205 for G and a 255 for blue. Click that second color. Hit OK. Finally, we have our third color. Again, you could probably do all this in one shot. Just go out, grab a lighter color there. We have a 184. 184, 208, 252. So very little difference in that second shade, third shade. But we can still go ahead and change that by coming in and doing these numbers here. 184, 208, 252. Hit OK. Now that material can be dragged over onto our dome, and you need to use the standard shot here to get this going. Now what you're going to notice here, it looks like it mapped it upside down. Let's take our camera inside and take a look here. We'll go into the camera view, see what the camera sees, and we'll probably rotate that camera up slightly. Uh, we do a render, and what you're going to notice here is very dark. We're using the colors we had, but they're upside down. So one of the things that we can do is take the UV map and go ahead and flip that. 
in the, I think it would be the U direction. Let's find out. Yeah, it'd be in the V direction. And then we do a render. We still have the darks at the top, the lights at the bottom. But one of our issues here that we have is it looks kind of dark altogether. It looks like a picture. And we can fix that by going into the material now, using the Go to Parent button to get back up into the, the traditional map. And then under its basic parameters, put on a self-illumination, or even type in just 100. That makes the sky nice and bright. So now when you do a render, we have the shades, the gradient down towards the ground, uh, and the, it's a nice bright. Now you can adjust that brightness by changing that self-illumination. If your sky is too bright and you get a lot of wash out there, you go ahead and use that. And now we have a gradient sky. And no matter where we move that camera in our scene, that sky will, in fact, stay true with our view. We look up deeper up into the sky, and you can see that it is darker blue, but we still have that lightness at the bottom. So that's actually the first part of our lesson here. Once you have your gradient sky and your dome is set, make sure you save the project. Now we'd like to move on and go ahead and do some landscape. And um, what you could do if you want to lock your dome in place, or um, yeah, for now let's just leave it go. In a little bit here, what we're going to do is probably hide it so that we can concentrate on the landscape. But let's grab the camera, move that camera out just slightly, and bend it down so it's looking down towards the ground. And you can see that the gray represents the area that um, is empty right now. Create a uh, plane. Go to create geometry standard and use a plane. Drag that plane so that it's larger than your dome. You also want to take it and move it up to the bottom of the dome. Think of it as like a cap at the bottom. It can actually go over a little bit over top if you like. Under Modify, take that segment and uh, maybe put in like say 50-50. These numbers will vary on your preference. The more segments we have, the smoother our landscape will be. But now what we want to do is create the illusion that uh, if we did a render right now, you just see a straight line. And um, there are very few places in the world where you could stand and look at the edge of the earth, if you know what I mean. So we want to create some kind of bumpy um, landscape on the very edge of our area that will allow us to, to believe that um, you know we can't see the end of the sky, that, that it just doesn't drop off the end of the earth. We could do that by going in uh, and applying to the plane an Edit Mesh Modifier. When I do that Edit Mesh Modifier, I can go in and grab various vertices and raise those vertices up to create the illusion that there's a bumpy terrain. Now, it would take a lot of time to sit here and kind of go in and grab vertices and move them around. There's a really neat tool in here that um, you may not be aware of. Under your uh, rectangular selection region, if you hold that down, there's a little spray can. And what that's going to do is going to allow you to, once you click outside and start dragging in, now you do have to be in Edit Mesh mode here. Let me go ahead back into the Select This Object Edit Mesh. I can take that spray can, click, and start dragging along the landscape here. And what it's doing is it's only selecting the vertices that are within the dome. And uh, maybe, you know, kind of do a little bit of protrusions outward, giving it the, uh, the illusion that there are um, there's a there's a perimeter. Now with the move tool, I'm going to go ahead and just lift all of those up just a little bit. Now I'm going to go back in, do the same thing again. I'm going to go in, drag an area here, just kind of randomize it. Take the move tool, come up a little bit more. Now I can't see because my camera's in the way of the landscape, so I'm going to go ahead and move my camera in a little bit there. Now what you'll see is if I take the camera and I start looking around the scene, 
I have mountain ranges all around me. You can also go in uh, back into the landscape once again in the modify in the vertex mode take your little airbrush tool um, maybe start just doing some randomized spots and raise those up now we're in the opposite end of the scene so I come back out here maybe bounce a little bit of this here and it's all on the fly here there's really no pre-planning and I'll explain why uh, this is kind of a neat feature now if you also remember that we can apply noise to a plane but if we do that right now our landscape becomes very bumpy all over the place and we may not want that we may want our grass area to be kind of nice and flat um, and then the background to be a little bumpy so we can grab we can go in and at this point I'm gonna hide the dome you have the idea we'll we'll show it again here a little later but we can grab um, the object in vertex mode select just and I need to get back out of the spray can here and go back into my rectangular marquee grab the top vertices and apply the noise modifier to that I can add some X noise some Y noise I should probably have fractal on that helps Z is gonna bounce it up and down a little bit frequency as you increase the frequency and the phase you'll see some different uh, bumps there you can go in and uh, grab just parts of the mesh and change them around a little bit and the noise will stay on there and this is how you'll create kind of the illusion that we're in the middle of a large landscape as opposed to just a a basic 3D scene so as I rotate my camera you look around I have rocks and mountains all around me now a second way to do this um, in fact here let's 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 take a look back here notice how the the, the landscapes kind of rocky and bumpy uh, you may like that you may like that bumpiness there you can also go in and apply to the entire section there uh, turbo smooth that smooths it out so it's not so rocky it's more hilly and uh, that that's a nice little touch too it does add more segments uh, it converts it to NURB surfaces but it still works for us a second way of creating a terrain surface is by forcing uh, the terrain into a certain format I'm gonna go take the line tool and I'm gonna go ahead and just create this shape what's going to represent the base of a landmass I can come in and make a second pass at it this is gonna represent uh, an elevation of that landscape and then maybe I'll do one more little crest here at the very top make sure that that does not it looks like it's okay now in the side view here all three of those shapes are located in the same location on the x-axis let's hide this for a second so I grab the second land mass I raise it up the third land mass I raise it up and now what I have I'll go back into perspective view for a second here what I have is three wireframe representations using the bottom one I'm gonna go in and create what we call the um, going to geometry compound objects and we're going to use terrain terrain planes out that surface and then allows you to add operands pretty much giving you another landmass this landmass can be edit meshed and smoothed out as well and attached to our scene so I'm going to unhide all for now and uh, we'll change our view back in the camera and uh, as we take that camera and we look around you'll see that um, our landmass is not visible because it's below us so let's move that up a little bit I can go in and use that as a landmass as well but I can I have a little bit of control over that instead of if I go to scale parts I can't do that 
Um, well, I can. I can go into Edit Mesh and scale mountains down. But because this is a separate entity, I can scale that down at, at my own preference. Now one last thing while we're in the uh, editing mode here and using uh, building our terrains, you may decide that you want to add some water. And uh, a river bank is very similar to that of the opposite of a mountain. I'm going to go ahead and select my terrain, go back into its edit mesh mode, vertices, take my little spray can here which is under the, the rectangular marquee, and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag right down and just create myself a little stream. In fact, I'm going to make it a little wider. I'm going to go around here and with my left mouse still selected, that kind of gives it a, a, a wideness there. I'm going to go and take that and drop that down below the surface just a little bit. Take the select again, go back through, add another pass. All that's going to do is allow me to go in and lower and create that illusion that that, um, that, lands, that landscape drops down inside. Because if I drop water in there, I can make the water surface level. And we'll do that in, uh, at the end of this lesson. So there we have it. We have uh, a landscape that's kind of, it, it doesn't, no matter where we look, we don't get the illusion like we're sitting on a plain uh, surface. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and I'm going to teach you how to create what we call procedural map. And uh, if you go in right now and you drop grass on here, the grass is going to cover the mountains, this, and then underwater. And it's just going to repeat that same picture of grass, leaving those ugly um, lines in there, the, those lines, that tiling lines, and it, it looks so very unprofessional. We're going to use that surface though to create a nice procedural terrain, pretty much one image that's going to cover this entire landscape. So instead of having multiple maps, we'll have one map. And we're going to do that uh, by going in and doing a quick rendering and using that rendering to show us what, where to actually paint our materials. The way that I like to tackle that procedural terrain is let's, uh, let's go ahead and hide the sky. Um, we need to get rid of that. And uh, I'm going to take this landmass out for now. Um, you can use it if you want or you can just go with the traditional method. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a rendering of the top view here. So I'm going to go into my render settings, do a render setup. And when the render output, I'm going to go ahead and just call that top view. Make sure it's a JPEG. Video is not going to work. I'm going to hit save. Okay. And because my landscape is pretty much a square, uh, that's okay if the rendering overlaps a little bit. We'll be fine. You'll kind of get the point here in a little bit. We do want to make sure we're rendering just a single. So I'll hit render. And again, I'm doing the top view, which is something we don't do very often. Now what you'll notice here is we can see how the mountain ranges pick up here and how the recessed area where the water is. So I'm going to take that picture and I'm going to go out to Photoshop and I'm going to open up that picture. We'll bounce out to the desktop. We'll grab top view. Hit open. And I'm going to crop that out right away. I only want the picture to be the size of the object that we're going to put the material on. All that extra stuff doesn't matter. Now we can, because it's a pretty small rendering right now, we can go into image size and we can up the resolution. I'm going to go to about 200. That makes the graphic bigger. It's fuzzy, but that's okay because it's just a representation. We're going to layer materials on top of this graphic, save it out, and then reapply it to the entire scene. So if this is a little blurry, all that we need to know is where the edge of the uh, mountain stops, where the water is, uh, perhaps maybe you have a road or, or a sidewalk or something, and you'll be able to use that this technique for pretty much any 3D scene that you ever decide you want to use. And I'm going to even go and, and just do a nice little crop, get that extra spot out of there. 
This isn't perfect, but it is a good way by starting and, and uh, bringing in a material. Now you'll notice I have a bunch of materials opened up here. For instance, I have gray dirt. I have rocks. Uh, another set of rocks. Uh, dirt. And uh, these landscapes I can also use. Grass. So let's go and um, we'll open up this material. We're going to pull it down so we can see it. And I'm going to go and drag, the, we'll start with grass. I'm going to drag grass into that scene. Okay, I'm going to click right on it and drop it inside the scene. Maximize the scene. Now, right now this grass is huge. If we were to just map it on there, the blades of grass would be like the size of cars. We need to size that down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll redock this. I'm going to go ahead and use just my Edit trans Free Transform tool, and I'm going to make that nice and small. Try to think about proportion here and get it close. And I'm going to say um, this area here, I want to be grass. Well, it would it would get very annoying to sit here and keep copying that layer and, and, and layering it on top of each other. So we're going to use the Rubber Stamp tool. What the Rubber Stamp tool does is when you hover over the, the material and you hold the Alt key, and you click, it samples that area. Now you can use your left mouse and brush it. Now this does take a few minutes to kind of get it going. You, you, you are repeating the pattern, but you can go ahead and just get kind of crazy and unique and start blasting different patterns up here. Uh, at some point you can go ahead and duplicate this layer, rotate it a little bit, and um, just get some uniqueness there. But for the most part, what this will do is it will make it all grass, but it won't have seams in it. And that's what we're shooting for is we don't want to see that repeating seam. That's a dead giveaway that it is a uh, 3D rendering and not a real picture. And I know that it, it takes a lot to kind of get that realistic look, but that's the primary goal in 3D is to create something that looks real. And it is believable. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, just fill this spot in here. Okay. Next, what I can do is the same procedure for the mountains back here. I can go in and uh, let's see, we'll grab this picture of rock. And I'm going to drag this rock formation as a layer onto, get rid of this. Now this is much bigger than my canvas, so I'm going to back up and do an Edit Transform, Edit Free Transform, and try to scale that down. Holding my Shift key, it does it proportionately. And again, I'm just getting it to try to be somewhat proportionate. That'll work. I think that'll work for the mountain range. Go ahead and click, zoom in there a little bit. Position it so it is part of the, the final product, but again, using the rubber stamp tool, Hit Alt, take a sample, start um, coming in and just kind of airbrushing. And what also is neat about the airbrushing portion of it is that you can get this this blend between the grass and the um, the rocks, where you don't have this just this abrupt change, which again looks fake. You know that um, this blend will will give the illusion that it has changed over time, uh, over distance, I should say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break here, uh, hit pause on the video, and I'm going to complete this entire scene. You could go do the same, just bringing in various materials and dragging them in there and using the rubber stamp tool to create this one gigantic graphic. So I'm going to pause, and when, when I unpause, we'll, we'll discuss briefly how we did this and how to apply it in Max. So this is just a, a real quick thrown together view. Now notice I'm not concerned about this object out here, this area out here. It's 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 not going to be an issue because it's outside the dome um, but you know at least you make sure make sure you're inside the dome area and uh, I just I have some rocks over here some uh, some mountain type where I put a little bit of rock rockage through there uh, grass down on the flat surface and then the area where the water is going to go I put rocks as well that way when you look down into the water you don't see grass underneath the water you see rocks and that's more practical I'm going to save this for the web and devices. Just make it a JPEG. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it um, Landscape Map. 
you're welcome to, to use it, uh, call it whatever you want, as long as you remember. And I'm going to go ahead and bounce back out to Max. And now what I'm going to do is select the material editor and bring that material in. So we have a gradient sky. Now we're going to bring in our map, diffuse, bitmap, choose my landscape map. And you could also go back into Photoshop, do a black and white of that, creating a bump texture, and then coming back down and playing the bump texture, which would match the the bitmap. So that's that you know that that also is um, something I'd I'd hope that you could figure out. Um, but now let's go ahead and drag our map onto our landscape, make it visible. And now I'm going to go ahead and change back into perspective just so I can kind of fly out here and take a look at it. You will see that our map kind of matches the contour of the land. It does stretch it a little bit uh, because the, the material is done in a 2D, but for the most part you can't really see any re major repeating patterns here that you you know you have the dirt and the rocks and we're gonna come back and do trees and bushes too here in a little bit but now when we go in we'll go into our camera view and then we're gonna unhide all we have our sky and we have our landscape I can do a render and uh, I guess I'll ever do that and I'm starting to get this procedural look here where this, there's a unique look to it. We don't have this repeating pattern. It does not just plain green grass and p plain brown rocks. There is a texture there, but for the most part, we're starting to get the feel that uh, there could be something beyond that ridge.